Hello, and welcome back to to another episode of Twelfth Night, and this is the last act. I, I normally would switch to poetry on Wednesdays, but uh, I'm going to be a bit busy for the next week and a half. And while I will probably find time to do a short episode of plays on Saturday, um, we're just really close to the end of Twelfth Night, and this is probably the best time I'll get done for a while. So, with that being said, we're finished, we're going to do Act 4 today. And let's begin. Act 4, Scene 1. The street before Olivia's house. Enter Sebastian Clown. Clown. Will you make me believe that I'm not sent for you? Sebastian. Go to, go to, thou art a foolish fellow. Let me be clear of thee. Clown. Well, hold out faith. No, I do not know you. Nor am I not sent to you by my lady to bid you come speak with her, nor your name is not Master Cesario, nor this is not my nose neither. Nothing that is so is so. Sebastian I pray thee vent thy fellow somewhere else. Thou knowest not me. Clown Vent my folly, he has heard the word of some great man and now applies it to a fool. Vent my folly, I am afraid this is great luber. The world will prove a cockney. I pray thee now, ungird thy strangeness, and tell me what I shall vent to my lady. Shall I vent her that thou art coming? Sebastian, I pray thee, foolish Greek, depart from me. There is money for thee if you tarry longer. I shall give worse payment. Clown. By my troth, thou hast an open hand. These wise men that gives fools money get themselves a good report after fourteen years' purchase. Enter Sir Andrew, Sir Toby, and Fabian. Sir Andrew. Now, sir, have I met you again? There's for you. Striking Sebastian. Sebastian. Why, there's for thee, and there, and there. Are all the people mad? Beating Sir Andrew. Eh, eh, eh. Sir Toby. Hold, sir, or I'll throw your dagger or the house. Clown. This, this will I tell my lady straight. I would not be in some of your coats for two pence. Exit Clown. Sir Toby. Come on, sir, hold. Holding Sebastian. Sir Andrew. Nay, let him alone. I'll go another way to work with him. I'll have an action of battery against him. If there be any law in Illyria, though I struck him first, yet it's no matter for that. Sebastian. Let go thy hand. Sir Toby. Come, sir, I will not let you go. Come, my young soldier. Put up your iron. You are well fleshed. Come on. Seb Sebastian. I will be free from thee. What was thou now? If thou darest tempt me further, draw thy sword. Draw sword. Sir Toby. What? What? Nay, then I must have an ounce or two of this. I'll perp blood from you. Draws. Enter Olivia. Olivia. Hold, Toby, on thy life. I charge thee, hold. Sir Toby. Madam? Olivia. Will be ever thus ungracious wretch? Fit for the mountains and the barbarous caves? Where manners near were preach out of my sight? Be not offended, dear Cesario. Roods be gone, I pray thee, gentle friend. Exit Sir Toby, Sir Andrew, and Fabian. 
Let thy fair wisdom, not thy passion, sway in this uncivil and unjust extent against thy peace. Go with me to my house and hear about there how many fruitless pang pranks this ruffian hath botched up, that there thou thereby may smile at this. Thou shalt not choose but go. Do not deny Beshru his soul for me. He started one poor heart of mine in thee, Sebastian. What relish is in this? How runs the stream? Or I am mad. Or else this is a dream. Let fancy still my sense and lead steep. If it be thus to dream, still let me dream. Olivia, nay, come, I pray thee, would thou be ruled by me? Sebastian, madam, I will. Olivia, oh, say so, and so be. Exit. Scene 2. A Room in Olivia's House Enter Maria and Clown. Maria. Nay, I pray thee, put on this gown and this beard. Make him believe thou art Sir Topas the curate. Do it quickly. I, I'll call Sir Toby the Welsh. Except Maria. Clown. Well, I'll put it on, and I will disassemble myself in it. And I would, I were the first that ever disassemble in such a gown. I am not tall enough to become the function well, nor lean enough to be thought a good student. But to be said, an honest man, a good housekeeper, goes as fairly as to say, a careful man and a great scholar, the competitor enter. Enter Sir Toby Belch and Maria. Sir Toby. Jove bless thee, Master Parson. Clown. Well, notes dies. Sir Toby. For as the old hermit of Prague that never saw pen and ink. Very wittily said to a niece of good King Gorbiduk. That, that is, is... So I, being Master Parson, am Master Parson. For what is that but that is but is? Sir Toby, to him, Sir Topaz. Clown, well ho, I say, peace in this prison. Sir Toby, the knave counterfeits well, a good knave. Alvoyo in a ender chamber. Who calls there? Clown. Sir Topaz, the curate who comes to visit Malvolio the lunatic. Malvolio. Sir Topaz, Sir Topaz, good Sir Topaz, go to my lady. Clown. Out, oh, hyperbolical fiend. How vexest thou this man? Talkest thou nothing but of ladies? Sir Toby. Well said, Master Parson. How about you? Sir Topaz, never was man thus wrong. Good Sir Topaz, do not think I am mad. They have laid me here in hideous darkness. Clown, fie thou dishonest seven. I call thee but the most modest terms, for I am one of the gentle ones. I will use the devil himself with cursey. Says thou the house is dark? Malvolio, as hell, Sir Topaz. Clown, why hath bay windows transparent as barcados and the clear stories towards the south north are as lustrous as ebony, and yet complaint thou of obstruction? Malvolio, I am not mad, Sir Topaz. I say to you this house is dark. Clown, madam, thou erest, I say, there is no darkness but ignorance, in which thou art more puzzled than the Egyptians in their fog. Malvolio, I say this house is dark as ignorance, though ignorance were as dark as hell. 
and I say there was never a man thus abused, I am no more mad than you are. Make the trial of it in any constant question. Clown. What is the opinion of Pythagoras concerning wildfowl? Malvolio. That the soul of our grandma might happily inhabit a bird. Clown. What thinkest thou of his opinion? Malvolio. I think nobly of the soul, and no way approve his opinion. Clown. Fare thee well. Remain thou still in darkness. Thou shalt hold the opinion of Pythagoras ere all will allow thy wits, and fear to kill Woodcock, unless thou disposest the soul of thy grandma. Fare thee well. Now, Volio. Sir Topaz! Sir Topaz! Sir Toby? My exquisite Sir Topaz? Clown. Nay, I am for all the wars. Maria. Thou mightest have done this without thy beard and gown. He sees thee not. Sir Toby. To him in thine own voice, and bring me word of how thou findest him. I would we were well rid of this knavery. If he may be conveniently de delivered, I would he were, for I am now so far in fence with my knees that I cannot pursue with any safety this board to the upshot. Come by and by to my chamber. Exit Sir Toby and Maria. Clown singing. Hey, Robin, jolly Robin, tell me how thy lady does. Malvolio, fool. Clown. My lady is unkind, purdy. Malvolio, fool. Clown. Alas, why is she so? Malvolio, fool, I say. Clown. She loves another who calls ha. Malvolio, good fool, as ever thou wilt deserve well at my hand. Help me to a candle and pen and ink and paper. I, as I am a gentleman, I will live to be thankful for thee for it. Clown, master Malvolio. Malvolio, a hey, good fool. Clown, alas, sir, how fell you besides your five wits? Malvolio, fool, there was never man so notoriously abused. I am as well in my wits, fool as thou art. Clown, but as, but as well, then you are mad indeed, if you be no better in your wits than a fool. Malvolio, they have here propertied me. Keep me in darkness, send ministers to me. Asses, and do all they can to face me out of my wits. Clown, advise you what you say. The minister is here, Malvolio. Thy wits the heavens restore. Endeavor thyself to sleep, and leave thy vain bibble-babble. Malvolio, Sir Topaz? Clown, maintain no words with him, good fellow. Who I, sir, not? I, sir, God be with you. Good Sir Tubhaz, Mary, amen. I will. Sir, I will. Malvolio. Fool, 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 I say. Clown. Alas, sir, be patient. What say you, sir? I am ashamed for speaking to you. Malvolio. Good fool, help me to some light and some paper. I'll tell thee I am as well in my wits as any man in Illyria. Clown. Well, day, that you were, sir. Malvolio, by this hand I am good fool. Some ink, paper, and light, and convey what I will set down to my lady. It shall advantage thee more than ever the bearing of Laird did. Clown, I will help you toot. But tell me true, are you ma not mad indeed, or do you not but counterfeit? Malvolio, believe me, I am not, I tell thee true. Clown, nay, I'll ne'er believe a madman till I see his brains. I will fetch you light and paper and ink. Malvolio, fool, I requite it in the highest degree, I pray thee be gone. Clown singing, 
I am gone, sir, and non, sir. I will with you again and a trice, like to the old vice ye need sustain, who with dagger of lath in his rage and his wrath cries, Aha, to the devil, like a mad lad, pare thy nails, dad, adieu, good man, drivel, exit. Scene three, Olivia's garden. Enter Sebastian. Sebastian. This is there, that is the glorious sun. This pearl she gave me, I do feel and see. It. And though tis wonder that entraps and wraps me thus, yet tis not madness. Where's Antonio then? I could not find him at the elephant. Yet there he was, and there, there I found this credit that he did range the town to seek me out. His counsel now might do me golden service, for thou my soul disputes well with my sense, that this may be some error but no madness. Yet doth this accent and flood of fortune so far exceed all instance, all discourse, that I am ready to distrust mine eyes and wrangle with my reason, that persuades me? To any other trust but that I am mad. Oh, it's the lady's mad, yet if we're twere so, she could not sway her house, command her followers. Take and give back affairs and their dispatch, with such a smooth, discreet, and stable bearing. As I perceive she does, there's something in it that is deceivable, but here comes the lady. Enter Olivia and a priest. Olivia. Blame not this haste of mine, if ye mean well. Now go with me and with this holy man into the chantry by. There before him and underneath the consecrated roof. Plight me the full assurance of your faith that my most jealous and too doubtful soul may live at peace. He shall conceal it whilst you are willing. It shall come to know what time will, will cel celebrations keep according to my birth. What do you say? Sebastian, I will follow this good man, go with you, and having sworn truth, ever will be true. Olivia, then lead the way, good father, and heaven so shine that they may fairly note this act of mine. Exit. And now we're on... Act 5, the last of this play. Scene 1, the street before Olivia's house. Enter Clown and Fabian. Fabian, now as thou lovest me, let me see his lair. Clown, good master Fabian, grant me another request, Fabian. Anything. Clown, do not desire to see this, sir. Fabian, this is to give a dog and recompense desire my dog again. Enter Duke, Viola, and attendants. Duke, belong you to the Lady Olivia's friends? Clown, aye, sir, we are some of her trappings. Duke, I know thee well, how dost thou, my good fellow? Clown, Truly, sir, the bear of my foes and the worse for my friends. Duke, just the contrary, the better for thy friends. Clown, no, sir, the worse. Duke, how can that be? Clown, Mary, sir, they praise me and make an ass of me. Now my foes tell me plainly I am an ass, so that by my foes, sir, I profit in the knowledge of myself. And by my friends, I am abused so that conclusions to be as kisses if your four negatives make your two affirmatives. Why then the worse for my friends and the better for my foes? Duke, why this is excellent! Clown, by my troth, sir, no. Thou pleases you to be one of my friends. Duke, thou shalt not be the worse. For me, there's gold. Clown, but that it would double be double dealing. I would, I would you could make another. 
Duke. Oh, you give me ill counsel. Clown. Put your grace in your pocket, sir, for this once let your flesh and blood obey it. Duke. Well, I will be so much a sinner to be a double dealer, there's another. Clown. Primo secundo terto is a good play, and the old saying is, the third pays for all, the triplex, sir, is a good tripping measure. Or the bells of St. Bennet, sir, may put you in mind. One, two, three. Duke. You can't fool no more my me at this throw. If you will let your lady know I am here to speak with her and bring her along with you, it may awake my bounty further. Clown. Mary, sir, little abide to your bounty till I come again. I go, sir, but I would not have you to think that my desire of having is the sin of covetousness. But as you say, sir, let your bounty take a nap. I'll wake at anon. Exit, clown. Enter Antonio and officers. Viola, Viola. Here comes the man, sir, that did rescue me. Duke, that face of his I do remember well. Yet when I saw it was solid glass, it was besmeared. As black as Vulcan in the smoke of war. A bobbling vessel w was he captain of, for shallow draught and bulk unprizable, with which such scathful grapple did he make, with the most noble bomb of our fleet, that very, very envy and the tongue of loss, cried fame and honor on him. What's the matter? First officer, Orsino, this is that Antonio that took the phoenix and her fraught from candy. And this is he that did the tiger board when your young nephew Titus lost his leg here in the streets desperate of shame and state. And private brawl did we app apprehend him. Viola. He did me kindest, sir. Drew on my side, but in conclusion put strange speech upon me. I know not what was but distraction. Duke, notable pirate, thou salt water thief. What foolish boldness brought thee to their mercies, whom thou in terms so bloody and so dear hast made thine enemies? Ant Antonio. Orsino, noble sir, be pleased thy shake. Off these names you give me. Antonio never yet was thief or pirate, though I confess on base and ground enough, Orsino's enemy. A witchcraft drew me hither, that most ungrateful boy there by your side. From the rude sea and rage and foamy mouth, did I redeem a wreck past hope he was. His life I gave him and did there to add. My love without retention or restraint. All his indication for his sake, to expose myself, pure for his love, into the danger of this adverse town, drew to defend him when he was beset, or be apprehended his false cunning, not meaning to partake with me in danger, taught him to face me out of his acquaintance, and grew a twenty years removed thing while one would wink deny me my own purse, which I had recommended to his use not half an hour before. Viola, how can this be? Duke, when came he to this town? Antonio, today, my lord, and for three months before, no interim, not a minute of vacancy, both day and night did we keep company. Enter Olivia and Tendons. Here comes the Countess now, heaven walks on earth. But for thee, fellow, fellow, thy words are madness. Three months this youth had tended upon me, but more of that anon, take him aside. Olivia. 
Luck would my lord, but that he may not have where Olivia may seem serviceable. Cesario, you do not keep promise with me. Viola, madam, duke, gracious Olivia. Viola, Olivia, what do you say, Cesario? Good, my lord? Viola, my lord would speak. My duty hushes me. Olivia, if it be aught to the old to my lord, it is fat and fulsome to my ears, as howling after music. Duke, still so cruel? Olivia, still so constant, lord? Duke, what to per -ser perverseness, you uncivil lady, to whose ingrate and unauspicious altars my soul the faithfulest offering hath breathed out, that er devotion tender, what shall I do? Olivia, even what it please my lord, that shall become him. Duke, why should I not, had I the heart to do it? Like to the Egyptian thief at point of death, kill what I love, a savage jealousy, that someone savors nobly, but hear me this. Since you too non regardance cast my faith, and that I partly know the instrument that screws me from my true place in your favors, like you the marble-breasted tyrant still, but this your minion, whom I know you love, and whom I, by heaven I swear, I tender dearly him while I tear out that cruel eye, where he sits crowned in his master's sp sprite. Come, boy, with me. My thoughts are ripe in mischief. I'll sacrifice the lamb that I do love to spite a raven's heart within a dove, going. Viola, and I must jocund apart willingly to do you rest a thousand deaths would die. Olivia. Olivia. Where goes Cesario? Viola. After him, I love. More than I love these eyes, more than my life. More by all mores than other I shall love wife. If I do feign you witnesses above, punish my life for, for tainting of my love. Olivia, ah, oh, me detest it. How am I beguiled? Viola, who does beguile you? Who does you wrong? Olivia, has thou forgot thyself? Is it so long? Call forth the Holy Father. Exit attendant, Duke, to Viola. Come away, Olivia. Whither, my lord, Cesario, husband, stay. Duke, husband? Olivia, aye, husband, he, can he that deny? Duke, her husband, Sirrah. Viola, no, my lord, not I. Olivia, alas, it is the baseness of thy fear that makes thee strangle thy prop propriety. Fear not, Cesaro, take thy fortunes up. Be that thou know'st thou art, and then thou art as great as thou fears. Oh, welcome, father. Re-enter attendant and priest. Father, I charge thee by thy reverence, here to unfold thou lately we intend to keep in darkness what occasion now reve reveals before tis ripe. What thou dost know hath newly passed between this youth and me. Priest. A contract of eternal bond of love, confirmed by mutual joinder of your hands, Attested by the holy close of lips, strengthened by interchangement of your rings, and all the ceremony of this compact sealed in my function by my testimony, since when my watch hath told me towards my grave, I have traveled but two hours. Duke, O oh, thou dissembling cub, what wilt thou be? What time hath so to grizzle on thy case? Or will not else thy craft so quickly grow, that thy own trip shall be thine overthrow? Farewell, and take her, but direct thy feet, where thou and I henceforth may never meet. Viola, my lord, I do protest, 
Olivia, oh, do not swear. Hold little faith, thou thou hast too much fear. Enter Sir Andrew Augucic with his head broke. Sir Andrew, for the love of God, a surgeon, send one presently to Sir Toby. Olivia, what's, what's the matter, Sir Andrew? He has broke my head across and has given Sir Toby a bloody coxcomb, too. For the love of God, your help I had rather than forty pound I were at home. Olivia, who has done this, Sir Andrew? Sir Andrew. The Count's gentleman, Juan Cesario. We took him for a coward, but he's the very devil incarnate. Duke, my gentleman, Cesario. Sir Andrew. Odes, lifelings, here he is. You broke my head for nothing, and that I did, I were set on to do by Sir Toby. Viola, why do you speak to me? I never heard you. You drew your sword upon me without cause. I bespake your fair and hurt you not. Sir Andrew, if a bloody coxcomb be a hurt, you have hurt me. I think you said nothing by a bloody coxcomb. Enter Sir Toby Belch, drunk, led by the clown. Here comes Sir Toby, halting, you shall hear more. But if I, but if he had not been in drink, he would have tickled you other gates than he did. Duke. How now, gentlemen, how's th with you? Sir Toby. That's all one. Yes, hurt me, and there's the end of it on it. Salt to see... Dick Surgeon sought. Clown, oh, he is drunk. Sir Toby, an hour gone. His eyes were set at eight this the morning. Sir Toby, then he's a rogue after a passing measure or a pauvin. I hate drunken rogue. Olivia, away with him. Who hath made this havoc with them? Sir Andrew, I help you, sir. Toby, because we'll be dressed together. Sir Toby, will you help an asshead and, and a coxcomb and a knave, a thin-faced knave, a gull? Olivia, get him to bed, and let this hurt be looked to. Exit clown, Sir Toby, and Sir Andrew. Enter Sebastian. Sebastian, I am sorry, madam, I have hurt your kinsman, but had it been the brother of my blood, I m must have done no less, with wit and safety. You throw a strange regard upon me, and by that I do perceive it hath offended you. Pardon me, sweet one, even f for the vows we made each other but so late ago. Duke, one face, one voice, one habit, and two persons... A natural perspective, that is, as not. Sebastian. Antonio, oh, my dear Antonio, I have the hours racked and tortured me since I have lo lost thee. Antonio. Sebastian, are you? Sebastian. Fearst thou that, Antonio? Antonio. How have you made a division of yourself? An apple cleft in two is no more twin than these two creatures, which is Sebastian. Olivia. Most wonderful! Sebastian. Do I stand there? I never had a brother. Nor can there be that deity in my nature. Up here and everywhere I had a sister whom the blind waves and surges have devoured. To Viola. Of charity, what kin are you to me? What countryman, what name, what parentage? Viola. Of um, Messaline. Sebastian was my father, such as Sebastian was my brother too. So he went he suited to his watery tomb. If spirits can assume both form and suit, you come to frighten us. Sebastian. A spirit I am indeed, but am I in that dimension grossly clad, which from the womb I did participate? 
Were you a woman, as the rest goes even? I should my tears let fall upon my cheek and say thrice welcome drowned Viola. Viola. My father had a mole upon his brow, Sebastian. And so had mine. Viola. And died that day when Viola from her birth had number thirteen years. Sebastian. Oh, that re recurs lively in my soul. He finished indeed his mortal act that day. That made my sister thirteen. If, Viola, if nothing else, let, let's to make us happy both. But this my masculine uh, usurped attire. Do not embrace me. Tell each other each circumstance, a place, time, fortune, do cohere and jump. That I am feel of which to confirm. I'll bring you to a captain in this town where lie my maiden weeds, by whose gentle help I was preserved to serve the noble count. All the currents of my fortune since hath been between this lady and this lord. Sebastian, to Olivia. So comes it, lady, you have been mistook, but the but nature to her bias drew in that. You will have been contracted to a maid, nor are you therein by my life deceived. You are betrothed both to a maid and man. Duke, be not amazed, right nobles, is his blood. If this be so, as yet the glass seems true, I shall have share in this most happy wreck, Viola, to Viola. Boy, thou hast said to me a thousand times, Thou never shouldst love woman like to me, Viola. And all those things I will over, over swear, And all those swearings keep as true in soul As doth that orb continent the fire that Severs day and from night, Duke. Give me thy hand, and let me see thee in thy woman's weeds. Viola. The, the captain that did bring me first on shore hath my maid's garments. He, upon some action, is now a durance a Malvolio suit, a gentleman, men, and follower of my ladies. Olivia. Ye shall enlarge him. Fetch Malvolio hither, and yet alas, now I remember me. They say, poor gentleman, he, he's much distract. Re-enter Clown with a lure. A most e extracting frenzy of my own, for my remembrance clearly banished his. How does he, sirrah? Clown. Truly, madam, he beholds Beza Beelzebub at the staves and as well as a man in his case may do. He has here writ a lure to you. I shall have given to you today morning, but as a madman's epistles are not gospel, so it's skill not much when they are delivered. Olivia, open it and read it. Clown, look then, be well edified when the fool delivers the madman by the Lord m Madam. Olivia, how now art thou mad? Clown, no, madam, I do but read madness, and your ladyship will have it as ought to be. You must allow Vox. Olivia, pray thee read I thy right wits. Clown, so I do, Madonna, but to read his right wits is to read thus, therefore per perpend my princess and give ear. Olivia, to Fabian. Read it to you, sirrah, Fabian reads. By the Lord, madam, you wrong me, and the world shall know it, though you have put me into darkness and given your drunken cousin rule over me. Yet ha have I the benefit of my senses as well as your ladyship. I have your own lair that induce me to the semblance I put on with the which I doubt not but to 
do myself much right or you much shame. Think of me as you please. I leave my duty a little unthought of and speak out my injury. The madly used my voyo. Olivia, did he write this? Clown. Aye, madam. Duke, this savors not much of distraction. Olivia, see him delivered, Fabian. Bring him hither, except Fabian. My lord, so please you, these things further thought on, to think me well as a sister, as a wife. One day shall crown the alliance on, so please you, here in my house and at my proper cost. Duke. Madam, I am most apt to embrace your offer. To Viola. Your master quits you, and for your service done him so much against the metal of your sex, so far beneath your soft and tender breeding, and since you call me master for so long, here is my hand, and you shall from this time be your master's mistress. Olivia. A sister, you are she? Re-enter Fabian at, with Malvoyo. Duke. Is this the madman? Olivia. I, my lord, this name. How now, Malvoyo? Malvoyo. Madam, you have done me wrong. Notoriously wrong. Olivia. Have I, Malvoyo? No. Malvoyo. Lady, you have prayed you pursue that lure. You must now not not now deny it is your hand. Write from it, if you can, a hand or phrase, or say, "'Tis not your seal, not your invention. You can say none of this. Well, grant it then, and tell me, in the modesty of honor, why you have given me such a clear lights of favor. Bade me come smiling and cross guard to you, to put on yellow stockings and to frown upon Sir Toby and the lighter people, and acting this in a obedience hope, why have you suffered me to be in prison, kept in a dark house, visited by the priest, and made the most notorious gick and goal that ever invention played on, and tell me why? Olivia, alas, Malvoyo, this is not my writing, though I confess much like the character that I've questioned tis Maria's hand, and now I do bethink me it was she. First told me thou wast mad, then camest in smiling, and such forms which were, which here were presupposed upon the end lair. Pray thee be content, this practice hath most surely passed upon thee, but when we know the grounds and authors of it, thou shalt be both the plaintiff and the judge of thine own cause. Fabian. Good, madam. Hear me speak, and let no quarrel nor no brawl to come. Taint the condition of this present hour, which I have wondered at, and hope that I shall not. Most freely I confess myself, and Toby, set this device against Malvolio here, upon some stubborn and uncourteous parts. We had conceived against him. Maria writ the letter at Sir Toby's great importance and recompense whereof he hath married her. How with a sportful mouse it was followed. May rather pluck on laughter than revenge. If that the injuries, injuries be rightly weighed, that have on both sides passed. Olivia. Alas, poor fool, how have they baffled thee? Clown. Why, some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrown upon them. I was one, sir, in this interlude, one Sir Topaz, sir, but that's all one. By, by the Lord fool, I am not mad. But do you remember, madam, why I laugh at you at such a barren rascal, and you smile not? He gagged, and thus the whirling of time bring in his revenge. Malvolio. I'll be revenged on the whole pack of you, exit. Olivia, he has been most notoriously abused. Duke, 
per pursue him and treat him into a peace. He hath not told us of the captain yet. When that is known, and golden kind time convince us, solemn combination shall be made of our dear souls. Meantime, sweet sister, we will not part from hence. Caesario, come, for so you shall be while you are a man. But when in other habits you are seen, Orsino mistress and his fancy's queen. Exit. Clown. Song. When that I was, and a little tiny boy, with hey, ho, the wind and the rain, a foolish thing was but a toy, for the rain it raineth every day. But when I came to man's estate, with hey, ho, the wind and the rain, gainest knave and thief men, shut their gates for the rain, it raineth every day. But when I came, alas, to wife, with hey, ho, the wind and the rain, by swaggering could I never thrive. For the rain it raineth every day, but when I came onto my bed with hey ho, the wind and the rain, with tosspot still had drunken head, for the rain it raineth every day, a great while ago the world begun, with hey ho, the wind and the rain, but that's all one, our play is done, and we'll strive to please you every day. Exit. And that is the end. And uh, thank you for listening.